You, you don't live in my reality. There's reality. You don't know what it's like to be gay or trans. Fine. Fine. Then make, then make it a rule that no straight white men can pass any legislation that relates to women, gays, blacks, transgenders. Good luck with your reform. I, one of the biggest logical fallacies, we've talked about this quite a bit before, is the uh, appeal to authority fallacy. Mm -hmm. So let me ask a question of the day. How often do you encounter this fallacy, uh, fallacy in your day-to-day, -day, like your political conversation? P pick any issue, okay? How often does someone try to throw down the trump card by pointing to an authority other than you? Mm -hmm. Be it, it could be yeah. gender, street cred, it could be race, could be scientific consensus. Point is, how often do you encounter people saying, well, you couldn't possibly know X, so you just have to leave it to Y, or trust this person who isn't here right now, or trust me because I have insert genitalia here or melanin. How often do you encounter? I encounter it so often right. that it's, it's gotten to the point where we become desensitized. So let me start this off with um, some new videos from this channel called Jubilee. And the videos are called Middle Ground. And they're designed to see if people from opposing ideologies can, can find middle ground, of course. So there's one, there's LGBTQ versus Christians. There's Black Lives Matter versus law, law enforcement. There's some, something with Trump supporters, abortion. Um, it's Important to note, it's the exact opposite of Change My Mind. It is hand-picked <laughs> yeah. voices of oppositions, very leading questions, and yeah. edited down so that you see exactly what the video producers want you to see. It's the opposite of raw, but let's look at the feminists and non-feminists on gender equality. Like abortion, um, those who signed the bill in the room with Trump, they were all white men. <gasps> oh I did gosh. not see she gets so stern, a single dramatic. woman. It just doesn't matter if it's a white woman. I did not see a single woman. <laughs> so those um, men <laughs> are making choices sale. for us women about birth control, abortion, health care, everything. The and we, we can't even have a say on it because they won't even hear us. Oh, don't moving you, don't the neck. Yep. She, like, she points in tandem. Okay, so her, her claim is <laughs> men signed Trump's abortion bill. So, for, but it's a woman's issue. Ergo, only women can comment on abortion. Which brings us to the real problem here, I think, with, with identity politics and this appeal to authority. It's so wildly inconsistent, they can't even apply it correctly themselves. <laughs> or even to themselves. Let's hit some examples. Okay, so she talks right here about uh, abortion, right? So wait, wait, I don't know why these men, she goes on to say, I don't know why yeah. these men can have to make decisions for abortion. Okay, Roe v. Wade. It was decided <laughs> by men, right? <laughs> You're welcome. Absolutely. Do you want it, you, you want that gone? Well, no, no, no. So it's okay, it's okay for men to have an, an opinion there. This is the appeal to authority fallacy that is not at all consistent. It's uh, I don't know why these people are deciding it unless they're deciding it the way that you want to. While we're hitting some feminist issues, guess who signed into law the right for women to vote? Men, predominantly white men. Guess guess who guess who created the rape laws that you have and are predominantly responsible for implementing sentencing for rape crimes? Most men. Yeah. Mostly men, they, they make up most of the judges. Where's you our, want to roll back all of those basket. laws because white men instituted them? You didn't have a problem with it then. Right, and even if she was correct and that mostly men were the people that were in that room at the time, d is she so dense that she thinks those are the only people involved in this decision? There were no advisors, there, were, there wasn't Congress, right. there wasn't anybody else that contained a group of women that were speaking. Dense oh, by the better. way, guess who invented birth control pills? A man! That was a, <laughs> that was a brilliant one too, by the way. It's like, you shouldn't have sex with whoever you want. Here's some pills that could allow you to do this, but don't use the magical pills. <laughs> of pleasure. <laughs> Do we take back the pill because a man invented it? No. Yes. Uh, speaking of, by, by, by the way, not even speaking of which, hit the bell, uh, join up Mug Club, uh, an hour show every single night, ladderwithcutter.com slash mug club, or watch the live stream Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern every single Thursday uh, so you can try it for free. So here's another claim. We often see this. It's not only with feminists. Uh, Black Lives Matter, right? These activists, yeah. these sort of identity, these identity politics, perpetual victim. They're, they're just professional victims, as we call them. Uh, so they'll say a lot, if you're white, that you need to step aside on racial issues. You've seen this oh, time boy. and time again. And my job is to shut other white people down when they want to interrupt. <laughs> my job <laughs> is to I shut interrupt? other white people down <laughs> when they want to say, oh, job. no, I'm not prejudiced. I'm a Democrat. I'm accepting. My job is to make sure that they get, that they have privilege. And until we shut our mouths and we listen to those people who don't. What I need you all to understand is this is not about you. Sit down, shut up, and listen to the people in need. Oh, you put oh that that face, that <laughs> serious face. Um, I guess I must be wrong. First of all, I like the the old white guy behind her who's like, do I clap? Do I not clap? I don't, I don't know. What's, what's the right so thing? Awkward, I don't like, know what to do. Is it, oh. do I endorse this? Do I not? What she should said I speak? All white people need to shut up, but she about still me. keeps Jeez. going. <laughs> I'm confused. Uh, it's not about us. Who created legislation to free the slaves? Hmm. White men. And I know that you'll say, that. well, exclusively white men enslave them. That's not true. It's also nope. relevant to the point. Would you would you have preferred that white men not free them? Because they were white? Who's on the Civil Rights Act? Largely white Republican men. 
right? This is something, again, <laughs> it's even if it's not entirely white Republican men, it's important. Does that change the point? Do you want to overturn those laws? Let me throw some more information at you here. So today, white conservatives who want to whittle away at the welfare state because it's grown too big and obviously yeah. the debt has ballooned, um, were accused of being racist. Yeah, most insensitive people on the planet too. But even then, who created the welfare state? White men! <laughs> Lyndon Johnson's war on poverty. Welfare state cost the American people over $22 trillion over the past 50 years. Look at the Model Cities program. Wait, so it shows you that white men don't even exist in a monolith. It's more than $21 trillion. They, they, they can't just, they can't just <laughs> be made into an enemy when it's convenient for your argument, but, but also this heroic monolith when decisions of white men fit your narrative. This is yeah. the problem here. You, shut up. It's not about you. <laughs> What if, they, what if they just said that to the, to the men what if they, to, before the Emancipation Proclamation? It's like, I hereby sign the... Okay, okay, I'm going to let you finish, but shut up. And this shit ain't about you, bitch. Listen to our plight. <laughs> All right, fine. Back to the fields you go. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. And the reason, let me tie it back. So this idea that white men shouldn't have an opinion on abortion. Okay, we legalize abortion. Should we re-examine Roe v. Wade? No! Okay, white men created birth control. Do you want to give that one back? No! White men uh, shouldn't have an opinion on oppression. Ended slavery. They voted for you to have the right to vote. Should we demand that black Americans, women, give that right back and vote on it because it was mostly voted on white men until we have a majority of black women? No! Okay, should we just get rid of the welfare state because white men instituted it? No! They're not consistent on any of it. And this is the appeal to authority fallacy that's even worse from identity politics because they pick and choose when to follow their own version of the rules. Usually when the identity politics rules... Uh, fit their narrative. So throwing historical context into the wind here. Uh, I'm a woman, therefore your, your opinion is invalid. You have to listen to me because vagina. We see this a lot with abortion. I'm black. You have to listen to me because see first phrase, I'm black. Uh, we could take this and apply it to anything, yeah. right? This is, this is the uh, trans people, mm -hmm. okay? We had someone sit down with a, uh, a change of mind. Why yeah. do you want to deny my reality? You, and you can't know and you shouldn't. You should sit down and listen because you're not trans. Okay, so no one who's trans can have an opinion or be involved in passing legislation? Good luck trying to get your supermajority in the House and Senate to get your trans issues forced through, let alone the courts. It's only okay if someone lives in, what does that mean? That you, you don't live in my reality. There's reality. Right. You mean I don't live in your delusional reality? You don't know what it's like to be gay or trans? Fine. Fine, then make, then make it a rule that no straight white men can pass any legislation that relates to women, gays, blacks, transgenders. Good luck with your reform. Forget hung juries. You have hung judges if that's the case. Yes. <laughs> Half of them are gone. They're completely <laughs> gone. And, and unless you, you've had enough of your spe the specified victims class status of the day, enough seats filled in the house, in the halls of government, you're never going to see any new laws. You're never going to have enough black women or tranny sequential hermaphrodites in the Senate or House. Nothing's ever going to get passed. I just think the left has no intent of following through with their argument. No. This, is what, this is the biggest logical fallacy of the left, and that's why it bothers me. These are, these are the same people, by the way, who when you talk about climate Climate change, like we've talked about, you know, Lake uh, the Great Lakes doing really well, unbelievable yeah. crop season. So if we're talking pragmatically, actually, it, there have been some really beneficial effects yeah. to the recent temperatures, which have been remarkably temperate in some places in the Midwest, not in other places. We're not talking about whether you believe in climate change or not personally, but these are the same people who say, "Oh, it doesn't matter what you believe because there's a 97 percent right. consensus on global warming." So we can't have this discussion. But then they don't trust a drop of medical research because it's all paid off by big pharma. And by the way, weed cures cancer. <laughs> Of course, we had to throw that in there. It's true. These are the same people. Yeah. Ninety-seven percent of scientists. Well, what about the fact that science is kind of out? In the f that if you want to get high, that's fine, but maybe it doesn't cure cancer. What are you paid by GlaxoSmithKline? <laughs> <laughs> the just, truth just is, don't go on the Joe Rogan show with that. <laughs> inferences, to one degree or another, based on sources. That's why you have to aggregate as many as many resources as possible. Don't just watch this. Go to HuffPo. Go to Salon. Go read the. Go read whatever. Go read it. PubMed. We have access to a lot of documents because of the, the licenses we pay for with this show. Read everything you possibly can from both points of view. Of course, like a courtroom, you try and find as many expert testimonies as you can, but then acknowledge that you're making at some point an inference and be consistent about it. When people are saying, okay, uh, there's a 97% scientific consensus. Uh, so let's not, what they're really saying is, you need to shut up, you don't have an opinion here. When they say, uh, why do you care so much about abortion? You don't have a vagina. What they're really just saying is, I'm not equipped for this argument, so you better shut up. When they say, shut up, this isn't about you, they are quite literally just saying, shut up, because I don't want to have to argue my point logically. Just address these people. When they say, shut up, you don't have a vagina, you can't have an opinion on abortion, you go, well, okay, so Roe v. Wade, what about the male judges who were, oh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. And they say, shut up, this isn't about you, Black Lives Matter. You say, okay, so then I guess let's, let's re just, just right away respond. Repeal the anti-slavery laws. Oh, well, what do you mean? Just fling it right back at them. You don't, have to, you don't have to take this crap. 
It's silly, and I'm amazed at how many people are stumped by it. It's just as stupid as any other appeal to authority fallacy, only less consistent. Hey there, YouTube viewer. If you like this video, I would say subscribe, hit the notification bell, or watch one of these videos playing in a box that we've personally uploaded and programmed for your viewing pleasure. The problem is now, in today's day and age on YouTube in 2018, any of those three things that you do, any of those three buttons that you click will take you directly to a Seth Meyers video. So stay here and join Mug... Get off of here. Go to loudwithcutter.com slash mugclub. It's the only safe place you can go and join.